Hi. Chapter 32 of Tanya. Love your fellow Jew. Despising the body and taking delight in the soul is the straight and easy path to fulfilling the mitzvah to love your fellow Jew as yourself. Only our bodies separate us. Our souls are always one. This is number one information that will really help you understand how to have Avis Shisrael. So we will see that in Tanya, we're going to take the advice um, as we saw in previous chapters to really understand that like we can't compare ourselves to somebody else. And until we're really in their place, we, we just we just can't like really look down at them in any way. So when we really uh, take this first step of just realizing, you know, it's my body, my ego that's like making the comparison. But if I really tap into my soul first, and um, this will be a really easy and direct path for fulfilling the mitzvah that you should love your fellow Jew as yourself. So you're not going to love yourself on the count of your body you love yourself because of your soul so the same thing when you're gonna love someone else you'll be able to really focus on their soul and not the external aspects of their being and since we know that um, all of our souls uh, source and root is the living God um, so then we can like not feel superior to one's fellow because we learned that they're, all of our souls are equal because we all have one father and uh, this is one entity. So we have this common root in, our, in, in the one God because all of Israel are called brothers and sisters in the full sense of the word. Um, and uh, so it just seems strange. Like, how can we be commanded to love a fellow Jew like we love ourselves? First of all, <laughs> like, you know, you really have to have the tools of how to love yourself. And this is like a, a, a whole like book in itself of how to do that. But the more we're capable of tapping into the love of self because of our divine soul that's rooted in godliness, then the more we'll be able to um, tap into the ability to the uh, to love them for their soul. You would think it's easier to love yourself. We know it's innate in our spiritual makeup to love ourselves, to love God. And it's innate in our soul to love another fellow Jew. It's like a natural DNA in the uh, of our soul. But people will say, but actually it's really not easy so the Tanya teaches us the more we make our soul a priority in our life then the more we'll access this natural innate love of Hashem and love of ourself and love of the other but the more we take precedence uh, and make our body like the number one you know uh, factor in our life on the account of our soul, then the more our body will separate us from other people and their body, as it were. So it says here, um, we, we need to make our love of our soul primary and our body secondary. So the greater the value one places on his body at the expense of his soul, the more conscious he will be of the differences between himself and his fellow. Um, so love between people that consider their bodies as primarily important, well then the love based on that external factor um, will be kind of dependent uh, and and limited according to the motivating factor. And they'll only endure as long as that factor exists. So if you love someone because they're money and then they don't have the money, then, then there goes the love because it's based on an external factor. 
So the more you tap into this essence of the soul, then you'll have the ability to tap into the DNA in a love that you have for for another soul. And as Hillel replied, what is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. Um, so it's interesting, like out of all things that he should have said it that way. Um, well, first of all, you could say like, well, I hate when people hate me, so I'm gonna really make an effort not to hate others. Um, but there's an explanation that, you know, if the whole Torah is this, what about all the mitzvos? Like, um, you know, ben adam lechavero, you, you would think, yeah, that relates to that. But how about ben adam uh, lemakom, between us and Hashem, and all the mitzvahs that we do privately, how is that based on everything on Avish Yisrael? Like the whole Torah is Avish Yisrael? Yes, even the mitzvahs that are between us and Hashem. Well, first of all, when you uh, do the mitzvahs, you're actually getting blessings to all of Am Yisrael. So we see here in Tanya that it says, explaining Hillel the elder's statement, that um, fulfilling the mitzvahs, this is the entire Torah. This this sentence of Ahavtorecha is the entire Torah, and the rest is but commentary. For the basis and root purpose of the entire Torah is to elevate and exalt the high soul, high above the body, to God and to the source and root of all worlds. Also, it is to draw down the infinite light into all of the community of Israel. So each time we do a mitzvah, we're having such obvious Yisrael because we're drawing down such godliness to everyone. And that comes from our love of wanting good for everyone. So we have to realize that the end soft light wants to come down into the world where there is unity. So if we don't have obvious Yisrael and we're separating ourselves from one another, then Hashem says, where there's fragmentation, I don't want to reside. And that's why the Pasuk says, um, God does not dwell in an imperfect, fragmented place. So it's very important that we have Avis Yisrael for the sake of all of Israel to get the godliness from all our mitzvahs. And that's why we say in our prayers from in the, in the Amida, Bless us, our Father, all as one with the light of your countenance, indicating that the light of God's countenance can be revealed only when we are united as one. And the Pasuk that we say in the end of the Mida is Barchenu Avinu Kulanu Keecha Beor Panecha. So we see here Beor Panecha in the light of your countenance. Panecha also is Pnimi, which is the inner essence, Panim, but it's also Pnimi, the inner essence of God's face gets to come into the world when we are ke'echad, when we are one. And this kind of is challenging when we think about some of the concepts that we learn, like you're supposed to, in the Talmudic statement um, from Pesachim, it says, uh, when you see a friend sinning, you should hate him, and you should also relate the fact to his teacher so that he will also hate him. How does this conform to all that we've been learning beforehand? So, first of all, we have to know it has to be someone on your own level, your companion, one's equal in the study of Torah and mitzvahs. But honestly, you're not supposed to hate them. You're supposed to hate their deed and, you know, help them see the light of, of what they're doing wrong. Um, but, you know, and there's, and if you're going to rebuke them, you have to be very careful. There's a lot of halachas when, if you're going to go there, but we're not going to cover that right now. We're going to really focus on this uh, ability of ours to uh, really take to heart how we can have more Avis Yisrael so we all um, can draw down Hashem and hopefully bring Mashiach already. Um, so we have to like try our best to be like the discipline, uh, I'm sorry, to be disciplined like the disciples of Aaron who loved peace and pursued peace. 
Um, and the Pasuk says, loving creatures and drawing them near to the Torah. So even someone lowly, like a creature, you don't even call him a man, uh, we're supposed to love. Even the lowliest of lowliest of sinners, uh, we're supposed to love. Um, and even though they're far away from the Torah, and even maybe sinning and rebelling, you know, bemazed. Okay, so the Pasuk, again, Le Yaakov Asher Pada Es Avram, is a story in the Torah that um, the Zohar brings about. Uh, remember, Avraham was about to uh, battle the four kings, and uh, the whole world was against him. And somehow Hashem said, Wow, Yaakov, your grandson, wow, in his merit, I'm going to pada. I'm going to redeem you, Abraham. That's what the teaching says. But the Zohar teaches us a deep mystical remedy for us to use to redeem our friends and family members if we're having a challenge with them. Yaakov represents Teferis, compassion. And if we activate compassion in our relationship to them, then we have the power to redeem the Avraham buried within them. The Avraham representing the Avat Hashem that's like blocked and, and buried. So when we relate to them with this energy of compassion, then we have the power to help redeem the Yidin out of their galus, out of their estrangement. So for instance, you know that Avraham worked wonders with people because he was Rodef Shalom. He always honored people. He always treated them with dignity and he had compassion for them for their struggles. And he was able to really help them turn around instead of looking down at them and cursing them that they were rebels. And that's why he was so successful. So here we're learning from the Zohar a key secret ingredient of how to help redeem those people that are stuck. You know, I always give the example of a, a little puppy stuck underneath a car and it's yelping. Oh, oh. And like you see, it, you just have so much compassion that it's stuck. You don't like get angry. How dare they make me bend and help them out of their stuckness? How blah. No, you just like feel the compassion of their stuckness. And with that energy, like you would see a little stuck puppy, you'll get really farther along the way in your relationships. And by the way, this is also for our own redemption. When we have compassion on our own soul because we weren't born as a tzaddik gamor, then that also helps us become more redeemed. So, are you ready to like take the Tanya tools and uh, the holy information to really help you uh, get to the place where you can be like um, like David Amelach said? Um, wow, that you know you might have the 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 experience of seeing their behavior and like hate what they're doing, but at the same time, you'll have compassion for them in their struggles. So let's get like uh, to a point in our lives that every day, especially right before we pray and we say the Hareni Mekabel Elai Mitzvah Ase Shel Kamocha, you know, that um, the way that we are going to have. Uh, a remembrance of this this very important you know endeavor to bring Hashem's light down is to be able to focus our attention in the prayers that we are going to take upon ourselves to have Avas Yisrael and then have more and more compassion and then when Hashem sees that we're doing this in the beginning of our prayers he says wow you love my children Ah, now I can reside within you. Now I can be part of your world. Because again, he does not like to be in a place of fragmentation. Okay, every day, make their soul first. Make your soul first. 
and more and more you'll be able to connect to them and hopefully redeem them.